Thank you for joining us. Welcome to Lumio Station. Que pasa Lumio Station? How's it going everybody? Got for you guys today a pretty fun and good OU Wi-Fi battle that I had against Julie aka Girl Prodigy X I believe her name is but her channel link and her Twitter will be down in the description below so if you guys would like to go follow her on Twitter and subscribe to her she does upload Wi-Fi battles herself so make sure to go check her out. Now before I continue I just want to go ahead and say thank you to everybody who welcomed me uh, two weeks ago on my first official Lumio Station upload and it was it was very humbling. I'm glad that you guys enjoyed it and hopefully from here on out you will continue to support my Wi-Fi battles and enjoy them as well. Also, for those of you who did like the new series Six Foot Strats with Six Foot Hacks that will be uploaded every other week along one of my Wi-Fi battles. So next week another episode of Six Foot Strats with Six Foot Hacks will be going up. Now look at that team preview. Going into this battle the biggest threat I saw on Julie's team was going to be the Togekiss, just because she can paralyze and flinch my entire team to death, so I really have to watch out for that. So she's going to be leading off with the Galvantula, as I'm going to be leading off with my Hippowdon. Right off the bat, I'm going to get on my Stealth Rocks as she goes for the Energy Ball. I then go for the Earthquake as she goes for the uh, Sticky Web, or I kind of go for Earthquake then Stealth Rock. Sorry about that. And the reason why this first bit is so sped up is just because that it's honestly the stalliest part of this battle. It's because it's me staying in, fearing the fact that she could go for a Thunder predicting me to bring on my Latios and paralyze me or even her possibly going for the bug buzz and as you can see energy ball is not even a 2 KO so I'm hoping that the sand will last enough to the point where it'll be able to knock out her Galvantula and I'll be able to have my Hippowdon at full HP unfortunately Sandstorm ends the one turn that it would have finished off Galvantula and now I'm forced to go for the earthquake as I knock her out with the earthquake this does give her a free opportunity to bring in the Weavile, which nothing on my team can safely switch into. So I decided just to leave in my hip out on for Death Fodder and maybe hoping I could live an attack coming from Weavile as she goes for the fake out. I guess maybe fearing that I could switch out or just scouting out to see if I would want to stay in. Either way, I'm just gonna fodder off my hip out on, but I live on one HP and I'm gonna be able to knock out the Weavile. And the real funny part about this is that my hip out on is actually not max defense max HP and that just goes to show you how bulky Hippowdon truly is. It is definitely one of my favorite Pokemon to use as she brings in the Latios. Nothing on my team wants to switch into this Latios so I'm just gonna leave on my Hippowdon for Death Fodder as now I can get a free switch into my Aegislash and I do actually carry a very special move on this Aegislash and it is Pursuit. That is because Aegislash does force Latios and Latios to switch out but she actually stays in thinking that maybe I would go for a sword dance or go for a secret sword predicting her to want to switch out. Either way, I'm still able to get off a solid 49% amount of damage on this Latios as she ends up going for the Ice Beam, I guess maybe thinking I would want to switch out or predicting me to just go for the King Shield and not have me stall out her Surfs. As I go for the Toxic, expecting her to actually stay in, predicting me to go for the King Shield. As now, I am going to go for the King Shield this turn, not only to rack up the Toxic damage, but if she does want to switch out, I'll be able to see what she wants to bring in on my Aegislash, as she does end up going for a Surf. And I also was kind of fearing the fact that she was going to try to bait me into not going for the King Shield and then revealing to me that she has Hidden Power Fire, but no, she just keeps spamming the Surf and I know I'll be able to take another one, so I'm just going to stay in and I'm going to go for the Pursuit again, just because even if she doesn't switch out, I should be able to bring her down to a point where the Toxic will be able to knock her out and that is exactly what's going to happen, so I'm going to get rid of the Latios, which also could have been a bit of a problem as she brings in the Sableye. I obviously don't want to get Will-O-Wisp, so I'm going to switch into my Manaphy, which I know might seem a little bit odd, but this is actually a really cool Manaphy set. It's actually a Rest, Rain Dance, Calm Mind, and Scald, so this turn, I'm going to try to go for the Rain Dance, thinking that she would switch out, fearing that I could uh, knock her out with the surf but no she does make a kind of risky play and stays in and goes for the time which actually is not a bad play at all just because I could have gone for a tail glow if I carried it so the fact that she went for taunt was honestly the better move that she could have gone for so looking back at it I should have really gone for the skull but I am going to take the opportunity to go for the skull this turn as she's actually going to switch directly into her scissor and I was really hoping that I was going to be able to get a burn on the scissor just because if this scissor does turn out to be a swords and sphere and it could definitely prove to be a bit of a problem to my team and even my Aegislash if she turns out to carry the knockoff. 
So she's going to go ahead and Mega Evolve, and I'm expecting to be faster than her, so I'm hoping I can get off a bit more damage with the Scald. Unfortunately, though, because I'm not running any speed investment, and I'm guessing she is running some speed investment of her own, she's going to be able to outspeed me and go for the U-turn on now into her Togekiss, which, much like before, I'm hoping that I can get a burn, because as I said, Togekiss is a massive threat to my team, but... No luck with the Scald as I am going to be forced to stay in just because I don't want to risk this Togekiss Toga possibly having the Nasty Plot. So I want to get off as much damage as I can with the Scald. But she's actually going to go straight for the Air Slash and I get very lucky and I don't get flinched. But I'm still not going to get a burn with the Scald. That's three Scalds in a row. You would have thought, you would have thought that at least one of those would have burned. But it's fine. I mean, it's only 30%. So I guess I shouldn't be too upset about it as I'm going to get knocked out by the burn. Although this now gives me a free chance to bring in my Aegislash, which does actually carry the Toxic. So I'm going to predict her to predict me to go for the Toxic and switch out into her Scizor. So I'm actually going to go for the Shadow Ball, but she makes a very excellent and ballsy play. Stays in, predicting me to over predict and go for the Shadow Ball. And she's going to go for the Roost. And now I'm thinking, okay, she's most likely going to go for the Thunder Wave predicting me to go for the king shield so what I'm gonna do is actually go for the toxic and just hope that I hit the toxic and don't get fully paralyzed but she pulls out the fire blast knowing that I wouldn't king shield and my age of slash just dies so it looks like I'm about to get swept by this togekiss my last chance is to hope that my mega guard chomp can knock out this togekiss with the Stone Edge and I've had this Garchomp since like early December and it's definitely well trained because I'm actually going to be able to outspeed the Togekiss and hit the Stone Edge knocking it out which means I got rid of her biggest threat unfortunately she still has this Sableye which could definitely be a problem so fearing the fact that she could go for the Will-O-Wisp I'm going to switch into my Latios but she makes another good play predicts that and she's going to go for the foul play, getting off a solid 52% amount of damage on my Latias as I'm just going to stay in and I'm going to go for the Dragon Pulse because I want to put her in a position where she's going to be forced to Will-O-Wisp my Garchomp, which my Garchomp is actually max special attack because I'm running a mixed variant of Mega Garchomp as opposed to a fully physically offensive Mega Garchomp. So I get off a good amount of damage with the Dragon Pulse as I bring in my Sharkeesha. I really have to hope that she does not go for the recover because at full HP, I don't know if my max special attack Draco Meteor will be enough to knock out the Sableye. Luckily though, my plan goes as planned <laughs> and she's gonna go for the will-o-wisp thinking I would go for the outrage or the earthquake as I'm able to knock her out with the Draco meter I highly doubt the crit would have mattered just because as I said I am max special attack and the Sableye doesn't really have the best special defense around as she's gonna bring in the scissor I can definitely take a bullet punch and I do carry the fire blast and I miss so she's going to go for the U-turn, and at the amount of HP that I'm at, I'm very positive that I should be able to live a bullet punch. It's just, can I hit Fire Blast? And thankfully, my Sharkeesha is well trained, as I mentioned, and I'm going to be able to knock out the Scizor, and that is going to be the very narrow 2-0 victory in my favor. So yeah, that was a really fun and intense battle that I hope you guys enjoyed. And if you did, make sure to leave a like, uh, showing the video some support. And with that, guys, make sure to go check out my channel, check out Julie's channel, and subscribe to Limo Station if you have not already. So hopefully you all enjoyed. And with that, I will see you all soon. So later, Lumio Station.